Luke chapter 1. We've been uh, studying out of the passage of 30 through 38, but for today's uh, scripture, we're going to start at verse 34, English, uh, easy standard version. Luke chapter 1, verse, start at verse 34, and we're going to come down to verse 38. Amen. It is our custom here, as always, to stand for the reading of the word of God. Amen. So again, if you are will, no, if you're able, not willing, but if you're able, please let's stand as we give reverence to the word of God. And it is on the screen for your reading. Let us read together. And Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I'm a virgin? And the angel answered her. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren, for nothing will be impossible for God. Stop right there, pause. Verse 38, can we say that like we mean it with some emphasis in it? Amen. Let's read. For nothing will be impossible. Pause. 38, let's say it again and let's read it like we believe it. Amen. Let's go. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Spirit of the living God, we thank you today. Lord, we've celebrated with you. We've celebrated for you. We've celebrated you. God, we ask, oh God, that you give your servant the anointing that makes preaching look easy. For Father, I cannot do anything without you. So I stand on your shoulders, Heavenly Father. You use these lips of clay. Make my mouth the uh, pen of a ready writer. Father, we bless your name today. We ask that you continue to be seen, be heard, and be known. We take full spiritual authority over any demonic forces. We pray, God, that this word comes forth with boldness and clarity, unhindered and unchecked by any demonic forces. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, rescue, lasso the minds and the hearts of your children so that the word, the seed of the living God, falls fresh in good soil. We thank you for it now, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Overshadowing 2023. Today's title of the message, Don't Limit God's Favor. Don't Limit God's Favor. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing King. For the past several, uh, 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 for the past week, we have introduced our theme for the year, which is overshadowing 2023. And again, uh, to go back, go, go get, uh, you can go to our YouTube channel if you wanted to look at the sermon for the first of the year, the word of God for God's people. So we are continuing in that vein of overshadowing in 2023. Now, when it comes to the definition of overshadowing, the, uh, the, defini the biblical definition of overshadow means to shelter, to protect, to cast a shade upon, to envelop in a haze, immediate, the immediate presence and power of God to shelter, to protect, to encamp around, to encamp around, to, 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 to uh, overshadow, overshadow. 
That is the definition. And when I was, again, preparing for the word for this upcoming season, as I read the uh, scripture, chapter Luke, starting um, at, I mean, chapter one of Luke, starting at verse 30, uh, 30 and coming down, the Lord was giving me revelation. The word overshadow stood out. And I believe the Lord wants us to know that as we move forward in the year of 2023, that it is his desire to overshadow us in all that we find our hands to do. Amen. And I'm thanking God for the opportunity to be, of course, at the City of Refuge Christian Church, Northern New York, for we have been called to be the light that has been placed on a hill that cannot be hidden. So we thank God for that. Now, I have to ask you a question, okay? Has anybody ever thought, we're talking about the year of overshadowing, but have you ever thought about how God chooses to use the people he used? Have you ever asked, you know, what, 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 what's the criteria, like, what's the, what, what is it that, you know, how is it, you know, that, that, that I get to be used of God? Because if you go and you look throughout scripture, God, you know, called people and used people mightily for his purpose. Am I right? So, so when it comes, you know, I don't know about you, but it, it usually, um, Tasha, when I'm going to apply for a job or whatever, uh, most of the times as I get ready to uh formulate my resume, I look for the qualifications of, or, or what should I say, what I need to be doing on the job, and, and then I take my skills and, and mirror it up with the qualifications required and uh, formulate my resume, which in, then in turn makes me a candidate for the position. Okay, y'all stay with me, stay with me. If anybody have ever applied for a job and you got your resume ready, good practices is you look at the job, see what the job requires, and, um, um, and then you suit your resume to get, your, get you at least an interview, right? So when it comes to God, when it comes to God, throughout Genesis to Revelation, we see how, you know, remember Noah? We don't hear about Noah until Noah gets ready to be used by God. Y'all remember that? Noah himself was given the, the task, Antario, to build an ark because it was going to rain. What you'll be told, ain't nobody ever seen rain, let alone build an ark. And so when it came to, to that, you know, it, Scripture doesn't tell us that there was an advertisement for the job. Scripture didn't tell us that there was a help wanted uh, or, or, you know, it, it wasn't posted on Indeed or jobs for jobs. It, was, it wasn't. It, Noah was chosen. Noah was chosen because of his uprighteousness before God. Being chosen. How do God cho choose people? And if God just choose is if he chooses, then does that make me a candidate to be used by God? Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all know. Y'all y'all didn't even ever hear about Abraham or Sarah, Sarai, Abram, until something happened or didn't happen. And then God was like, okay, I want to use y'all. Look, Abraham, come here. I'm going to talk to you about your faith, basically. And your wife. Y'all all old age. But that's okay. I've chosen you guys to do a miracle. Again, there was no advertisement for the job or the position. They were just chosen. Oh, y'all know Rahab, the, 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 the town prostitute. There was no, there was no uh, uh, job announcement that said, help wanted prostitutes of the time 
for the Lord hath need of thee. She was just chosen. And when you are chosen by the Most High God, it, it, it's a, it is a privilege. It's actually, it's an honor, Ontario, because again, there, if there were any qualifications or if there were any stipulations or guidelines for the job, Tiffany, all of us would be, wouldn't be even be considered. You know how you get that, that notification in the mail? Thank you for applying, but we've selected someone else more qualified for the job. You know. But I found, Ontario, that throughout the scripture, there was certain criteria, but you had to dig deep to find what they were. But God, the creator of heaven and earth, the sun, the moon, and the stars, earth, uh, 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 nature declares his glory. He himself, he is God who created man in the beginning, has need of you. I know ain't none of y'all looking to be, you know, used by God, truth be told. There wouldn't be a job that we would apply for if it was advertised. And why is that? Somebody said yesterday, some ain't, things ain't start happening until I came to the city. Because, Antario, what am I saying? I'm saying that when it comes to the Lord God in having need of you, it does cost something. It costs. I would stand up here and lie to you if I told you that it was easy streets. That, 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 that there's, that everything is all right in the world when the Lord chooses you. But then, that ain't always true. But the, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. Don't limit God's favor. I like the fact that when God does get ready to select that the criteria he sets that we're going to talk about a little bit today, the criteria that he sets, I believe all of us in here are qualified to be chosen by the Most High God. And the good thing about it is when he chooses, when he selects, he brings not only the overshadow, but along with that comes favor. What is favor? It is when the Lord God smiles on you. It is when the Lord God overshadows you. It is when the Lord God selects you for his own purpose. Last, last week we talked about whenever uh, 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 you are pregnant for purpose, then it attracts God's overshadowing. Why is that so important? Because when you have the favor of God, which then brings the, about the overshadowing, that lets you know that that job that God has assigned, that purpose for you, is, is, is going to be okay. You're the one that's selected because you, we, he knows that in of yourself you can't do it, but when he calls you to do it and you mirror it up with his favor and overshadowing, it equals success. Who? It equals success. Somebody say, I love the favor of God. Has anybody in here ever experienced the favor of God? <laughs> you know, truth be told, you, you weren't qualified anyway. As a matter of fact, you came to the table disqualified. But because God hath need of thee, So that's why when you're wondering, man, God, how you, how you choose somebody that know it was a drunk? God, 
God, and then you got Abraham. Abraham lied a couple of times, a few times. And some days he was shaking in his faith. But then if you get over into the New Testament, it says there was no greater faith than Abraham. Abraham, his, he was accounted to be righteous because of his faith. That right, Denari, because of his faith. His faith. He was counted because of his faith. Now, we as a human, we will immediately look at all the things you ain't got right. All the things that you don't do. All the things, the struggles you got. But aren't you glad God's favor supersedes all that? Because the God that we serve sees what you are going to be, not who you are right now. Who? somebody said hallelujah, amen. Because truth, you, you, you know, truth be told, you ain't. Mm. Sometimes you stink. Your flesh stinks. And sometimes, Lord want to put some of us, me in the headlock. But it still does not negate his purpose for you. Just lay hands on yourself and say, I got purpose. God didn't just create you because he didn't have nothing else better to do. He created you with a purpose. You got, you, you, there's a purpose for you. And, and, and the minute you get that in your spirit, you can then begin to move in, in the things of God, knowing that you're not your own. Oh, I got to get, I got to get, I got, I got to go because y'all, okay, okay, okay. So, so when it came to scripture, Verse 34, y'all remember last week we talked, and Mary said to the angel, how will this be since I'm, an, uh, I'm a virgin? The angel answered her. Now, let me just pause right there for a minute. Mary, we're going to talk to her today, because Mary will tell you us that there are qualifications for the favor of God for him to be used of you, but again, you got to dig deep. So when it comes to Mary herself, Mary was no, no uh, 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 stranger to the word th through uh, God himself. Because when I did a little bit of research, Mary's mama and daddy, one was in the tribe of Levi and the other one was in the tribe of Judah. Think about that. Right, right. Because I was wondering, I was like, well, Mary, who are you related to? Did, did, did you, by you being related to somebody? You know, how did you get, how did you, how did you get selected for this position? You know, but, 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 but then Mary would say, no, it ain't had nothing to even do with that. So it was the fact of the matter because she had been trained up in the way of the Lord. She knew who he was. She was not afraid of the angels because they had been talking about it at all the family reunions and stuff. That the angel can come, angel Gabriel, he sits on the right hand of the father, he the messenger. And when he shows up, that, 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 that means God got something to say. That's why through scripture she didn't panic when Gabriel showed up and said, Hey, Mary, you are highly favored amongst women. Oh, blessed and highly favored. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed and highly favored. Mary ain't apply for that. Trooper, trooper, trooper. Mary was 16. Mary was 16, she was a virgin, and not just that, she was from the poorest town in Nazareth. She had three things against her, Aunt Tario. I don't know why I keep calling you, but anyway. But she had three things against her. She was a woman, she was 16, and now, soon to be, she's going to be pregnant and ain't married. She could be put to death for that. Her reputation could be shot for that. She could be not, she totally mere unfit for use if it was left up to the people. <laughs> but Nazareth, Nazareth, I, I, I really, I, mm, thank you, Holy Spirit. Nazareth puts me in the mind of Watertown. A 
poor, poor town. That's why when Jesus was, was, was there, they asked, is there anything good coming out of Nazareth? Triple Joe, where Nazareth at anyway? Everybody there poor, you know, it, and, 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 uh, and, and mm, it's on the way. The people come by, the rich people, they, they travel by this way on their way down to the city. But, you know, they don't really come to stay, you know, because ain't no happening in Nazareth. So, here we are. Mary says, she says, the Holy Spirit, he tells her. He says, Mary, when Mary asked the question, Gabriel gave her the step-by-step of the events that's going to transpire to get her to complete the mission. Why did, why? Gabriel, because Mary, I do believe, had faith because of her upbringing. So she knew, right? But, but sometimes we can know, but our faith is still kind of, so God allows some things to happen to stretch our faith. Because he knows if, we, if our faith was never stretched. It was not his desire to Tiffany to keep a, a faith the size of the mustard seed. Your faith is, it, it, it is supposed to grow. You're, you're, mm. That's why you're wondering why things are happening. And it's because God wants to increase your faith. Well, okay, well, he, this, Mary, let me, let, look, Mary, let me tell you, God wants to take you to another level. You're favored and highly chosen. Okay, you're blessed and highly chosen. You're favored. All right, this is what's going to happen. I'm giving you the step by, the blow by blow, Mary, of what's going to transpire. Taking it to an account that Gabriel himself, messenger of God, so this, this, this wasn't nothing she read. This was what? She heard, this is what she knew. She could take it to the bank, right? Now faith cometh by hearing. She heard what Gabriel had to say according to the word. So she says, and it overshadow you. The spirit is going to come and the power of the most high will overshadow you. Therefore, the child that is going to be born will be called holy, the son of God. Here we go to today's scripture right here. He says, he says, and see, verse 36, and behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. This is the sixth month in which her child was barren. Let me go back. The first point I need to bring out as far as the qualifications, Al, of favor is this. Point one. The favor of God does not bring instant success or fame. You know, it used to drive me crazy. People are like, oh, I want to be a pastor. I want to be a minister. I want to I wanna have a title. I want to, I want to, I want to. Because when it comes to the favor of God on your life, favor ain't always fair. Favor is not always fair because, see, truth be told, when people are beginning to covet the position or the office and they're operating in covetousness, I do believe over in the Ten Commandments it says, thou shalt not covet your neighbor's house. You covet, you covet what you see, but you never want to cover the times when you own your knees. You never want to covet the time when all hell is breaking loose. You never want to covet the time when you don't understand why you got to be persecuted for righteousness state. You don't understand. Don't nobody want to sign up to be outcast. Don't nobody want to be signing up for the fact that your name So nobody want to sign up for that. They just want the, 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 the title, <laughs> the recognition. When truth be told, there is a cost. There is a cost. 
had a conversation yesterday. I don't understand. You just get up there and you, you stand up before people and it just like it just rolls off and this, you got it, this, this, and that. And I don't even understand how you do that, Pastor. Somebody say favor. Somebody say overshadow. This is what it looks like. Now, I ain't going to promise. Now, I still operate in a favor, but sometimes I walk from under the overshadow. <laughs> Adam and Eve walked out from the overshadowing. And because of that, that thing translated through mankind. So I'm always subject to error. And I ain't going to say I always try to walk... The favor of God does not bring instant success or fame. Here you got Mary, chosen, favored and blessed. But then think about it. She young, not married, she's from a poor city, and she's a female. That's me, my life on the line. Not just my life, Mary. Mary said, not just my life, but my reputation. Then truth be told, who says Joseph's going to want to be with me when I tell him what just happened? The favor of God does not bring instant success or fame. Don't be chasing the success and the fame because, again, it's still a process when you are walking in the favor of God. It's a process. It's a process. And again, it ain't everybody, and, and everybody ain't gonna be for you. Everybody ain't gonna celebrate you and be in your corner. Mess up one time and see what happened. The same ones that celebrated, Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus, the King is here, was the same one three days later talking about crucify him. The, 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 oh, hallelujah, God, thank you. So, so, so the favor of God does not bring you. Success or fame instantly. There, there, there is some things. So that's why I said. So Mary, her character, her characteristics made her unusable according to man. But God says, "Yeah, Mary, you're the one. You're young, highly, fa you highly blessed and highly favored." What? Okay. Next point says, "The favor of God. Don't limit God's favor as the title." We're in Luke chapter one. But the next point, it says, the favor of God makes you a recipient of grace. I pray that the Lord bring that revelation to you real quick. When I heard it, I was like, whoo! Mary, little town over there, Nazareth, chosen to be a part of God. astronomical plan. Wasn't nothing she did so favorable. And the thing is, when, when Gabriel came to her, Gabriel uh, uh, talked to her uh, uh, about her, uh, uh, her, her, um, her, her position, her, her, her character. It didn't talk about the fact that she got she, her piety, where she followed every religion principle it had nothing to do with that it had to do with the fact that God himself has selected Mary to bring forth his only son in human form guess what God has need of you God wants to use you but still, Pastor, I don't know about all that because I'm not sure about the qualifications. He says the favor of God makes you a recipient of his grace. Well, y'all know what grace means, right? God's riches at Christ's expense. Well, Mary herself received grace because she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. But not only was she able to carry grace, but she also was a recipient of grace. Let me 
sang about it, the word of Lord God, the, the truth and the, the living word of God. Mary was chosen for that. The favor of God makes you a recipient of his grace. The reason why you'll be able to do what God has called you to do, not because you qualify, but because of his grace. The power of the Most High God is already overshadowing you, but because of God's grace. It ain't the fact that you got it all together and you do everything to get it right, but it's because of his grace. It's the benefits of who Jesus is. I'm not going to finish this today. The favor of God makes you recipient of his grace. Mary, you're chosen, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're a recipient of the grace of God. The grace of God, the grace of God. God's riches at Christ's expense, God's grace. We're talking about the overshadowing. We're talking about the favor. And then we're talking about the grace. If you keep that in mind, then you won't limit the favor of God. All he needs is a body. A willing body. God has purpose for you, but the problem is you ain't willing. Willing. I want to know what God has called me to do. Well, are you willing to do it if he tells you what he got for you to do? Or are you going to whine, murmur, and complain? Or better yet, you already know. You done read in scriptures. I ain't going through all that. But see, the good thing about it is the reason why you're able to read about those people in scripture is because God used them for his purpose. And they did not let what was going on in them, through them, with them, to deter them from God's purpose. They said yes in spite of. They said yes in spite of. Because why? It's for God's purpose. So everything you go through, Y'all know that scripture we always quote, all things work together for the good. To them that are called according to. See, we stop at that. We just go to all things work together for the good. Oh, we'll shout it down. That's okay. I'm going through now, but all things work together for the good. For those. That are called and chosen <laughs> according to the purpose. His purpose, not yours. His purpose. I got to stop right there. Y'all got to come back next week for part two. It's time to go. But I want you to continue to keep that. Read that scripture over there. Keep reading about the, our, our focus for this year, overshadowing. Because I believe, I, I can't keep going, I got to stop. But, 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 there's purpose for you. I understand, Alonda, you were conceived. It wasn't even the best situation. Wasn't the best situation, Antonio. But I got a purpose for you. I got it. No, because mm -mm. see, truth be told, I don't want to use those people that got it all together because then they get it twisted and think it's about them. But I want to use them people that, 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 that's from Nazareth, they, that, you know, that's poor in spirit, that's humble because, you know, mm -mm. he resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Oh, my God. Get, mm. I, I want to use those people right there. You know, the ones that know they're struggling in their flesh, but truth be told, they know that the only way they'll be able to do what God calls them to do is because of his grace. The, those are the ones God wants to use. God don't want to use those ones that's pride and arrogant and, and, and 
think it's all about them because truth be told, he wants to get the glory through. Don't despise that stuff you're going through. It's all for his purpose. It's all for his glory. Mary will tell you, it ain't going to feel good. I'm going to tell you right now. Hey, you're talking about the stress and anxiety level, but come on now. You done got a visitation from Gabriel, and he telling you all these things, but then you already know your situation. You know where you're from. You know what the character traits are, and truth be told, you know everybody in your neighborhood, Miss Maybell and them and all them down the street, going to run you over the coals because how you going to tell, and then they're going to think you crazy because how you going to tell everybody you pregnant by the Holy Spirit and you ain't you engaged with Joseph, and then how you better, yeah, how I'm going to tell Joseph. Joseph might not want nothing to do with me, but the Lord called me blessed and highly favored. Oh, I got to go. I got, we got to go. Y'all got, we got to go. Because it's going to come a time I'm going to start showing. I ain't going to be able to hide that. Some of you pregnant right now in the spirit and you trying to hide it, but the Lord is saying, guess what? It's going to come a time. You're you going to have to deliver that baby. Because that which you were pregnant with <laughs> is for my purpose. Don't worry about it. Don't buy, worry about the fear, the doubt, the rejection. That's why I've overshadowed you. Let that marinate in your shana. You can do it. You can go through it because you've got the favor of God. You've got the grace of God. And you're overshadowed.